I'm so glad you could make it tonight, because tonight is Potato Buy. Potato Buy has been my favorite since I was a little kid. <laughs> And that's why I planted potatoes in my family garden this year. So in this video, I will show you what strategies I learned, which methods I tried, how each group did, and how my friends at AOTH did with their potatoes. So stay tuned to see what worked best. Thank you so much for being here. The Vineyard Chicks include me, DIY Trey, Bunky, our little gardener, and Professor KK. And now back to the video. My potato experiment started last winter when I put these potatoes in the cellar where they could chit in a dark, cruel place. Chitting is the process of when the potato eyes begin growing, and if they are in light, they will grow too soon and get too long and thin. I also did some potato research and learned about the Ruth Stout method. I saw my good friends at Happy Farm and Quebec Homestead do very well at growing potatoes using that kind of strategy. Then I saw Shedway's video from Britain Farms and Miss April had this really cool way of making cold flames out of hay bales and windows. And since my mom has already bought a ton of straw bales for the garden, all I needed to do was find windows and make this work for my potatoes. Trey and I made a square out of straw bales and used wheat straw because wheat straw is least likely to have pesticides. We placed the straw bales on top of the cardboard and then we put about a foot of compost and dirt inside. Next, I added nine potatoes to each of the straw bale squares and covered them with dirt and these old windows we found at our old property. Here's KK lifting up the window to show you how the potatoes are doing in May before we even planted our other potato group. The straw bale cold frame was pretty awesome because it meant I could put my potatoes out a month earlier than I normally would. And by midsummer, they were a foot taller than the other group of my experiment. Look at these pretty potato flowers. Did you know that potatoes made pretty flowers? I didn't. So, what is my second group in the potato experiment? Well, it all started at the Ruth Stout Method. And we made this nice bed of dirt and compost. Tractors sure come handy in the garden. So KK added potatoes to the edges of the bed and sowed turnip seeds in the middle. And you know what? We didn't really need any cover. The turnips did not take long to come up and they held the mound together. They sheltered it from the rains and winds really well. And the potatoes, well they did okay but the plants never really got as tall as the straw bale potatoes that had a four week head start. So today we're going to be picking potatoes and we kind of let our potatoes just grow and we're now going to pick them. It's a good potato. Let's put it in our basket. Mostly one. It's chewed on. I don't like it. Oh, nice potato and it's big.
So this is all the potatoes we got from the ba four bales, and we got a good bunch. And these are the bad ones that got eaten by rats, bunnies, squirrels, voles, voles and moles. And we're going to wash these, and then this is our hay bale harvest. Okay, so this is another bed of our potatoes, and now we're picking them. This is the result of my potatoes for my potato experiments. And we got some good ones. Now, these are the ones that we started in the dirt over at the front of the garden here. But these, I think they're better because we got these ones from my hay bale ones. And these are actually better, and I think that's the reason is because we had a head start for these ones, and those just we planted them right outside and let them just grow. We could do these earlier because we had covered them with a window and hay bales around. We also got some bad ones, like from rodents, but hey, and mom calls it bacon seed. <laughs> <laughs> and all of, we also planted turnips with these potatoes, and so the pigs will be happy with those too. to toss the potato to Adventures on the Homestead to see what their potato results are. We're gonna pick potatoes today. Someone forgot to tell me. <laughs> Welcome back to the homestead. Today is potato harvesting day. Last year we harvested ours earlier. We harvested ours right after they started flowering and we got a great amount of those small roasting potatoes. This year we decided to do it a little differently. We waited till the plants died back and the plant was done giving everything it was gonna get. So hopefully we'll get some bigger potatoes today. <laughs> so last year on our potatoes, we harvested them earlier. We harvested them when they were blooming. Um, and we got a whole bunch of the small little roasting potatoes. They were probably, well, they were bigger than that. They were probably about that big, the small little roasting potatoes. This year, we left them in until the plant was actually dying back and had given everything that it was going to get to the tubers. So we're hoping this year we got a better harvest. Before we pull the potatoes up, tell me about, this is our second year in, mm -hmm. and we've kind of really gotten associated with the pests. What yes. pests did you deal with with potatoes that you had to fight against? Potatoes, we, the only thing we dealt with was the potato beetles. And the only thing we did last year, we got a bucket of soap water and we would pick every single one off, put them in the soap water, and it was a downhill battle the entire year. This year we came in here and we got this insect netting instead. We covered it over them. We had a few beetles, we came in here and picked them off, but the insect netting did the trick. We have no more problem. We had no more problems the rest of the season. All right, well, let's get in and see how our harvest went this year. Cross fingers.
<laughs> Grayson, look at that potato. Hey, Grayson, hold the potato. Let me show it, show it to you. It's as big as your head. That's a big <laughs> potato. Oh, my goodness. That's a big old potato. Ah, big potatoes. Because not everybody has the option for a garden bed or Ooh, worm. You know. Right. Not everybody has these methods to be able to do this. Unfortunately with these, they're not as big. They didn't well the plants they died on their own pretty quick. They didn't last very long. Um, I'm not sure why either. I mean we already pulled a good chunk out of these ones. Forgot about that. So we did pull some out already. But so they were the smaller, smaller roasting size, ones. Smaller roasting size potatoes. But it worked out good. Anyways, this is great. So, what a good, we did a good potato harvest this year. We did. That was awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. That was good. We did not use many potatoes in here. We cut them up. Cut them usually about three or four pieces per plate for yeah. size potatoes. So that got four plants each potato. You just did full size potatoes in the ground here. Okay. I did. No, I didn't. I had the full potatoes and I cut them into pieces. All right, cut them into pieces. Okay. I got about four plants per potato we did. So that was good. That's pretty exciting. So, yep. And that was good. I think this was a success this year. I think we'll do more beds next year. Oh, more yes, potatoes. definitely. We'll have definitely more potatoes beds this next year to have more potatoes because that is a lot of potatoes and we could definitely do with more beds. So we'll definitely be multiplying the same technique next year for more beds because we're going to increase that. So, but we are, like I said, we're in a place with heavy pests though. So if you are in a place with pests, you don't want to spray stuff on it. This insect netting is great. I think we sp right. spent like 20 bucks for 33 foot. And it did a it did wonders wide. for just more than this plant. It actually helped a lot of our plants this year right. to really boom, just having a simple thing like that. A little bit of changes. And every year we just do a little bit more changes and increases mm -hmm. our produ produce. A little bit of this, a little bit of this. We're <laughs> off a whole lot of that really. But anyhow, Thanks for uh, watching us. It's getting late. The kids are inside because mosquitoes have come out now. So we're going to gather a few plants while we're out here. Vineyard Chicks, thank you for the collab. We appreciate you guys inviting us onto your channel. It's been always a pleasure. And until the next time, we'll see you.